Hi, I'm Howard Grew, representing CityLite's Service Desk. Welcome to NetLine. Coming up, I'm going to share a couple tips for using your GroupWise email and calendaring program. Also in this edition of NetLine, we're going to see some important safety equipment used by CityLite's electricians. And we're going to see how that equipment is tested to make sure it protects our workers from harm. If you're thinking about a camping or fishing type vacation this summer, you might just want to consider visiting one of City Light's best kept secrets, the Boundary Hydroelectric Project in Northeastern Washington. We'll tell you more about this outdoor paradise a little later. But first, join me in discovering a couple features of your email program that you may not have used yet, filtering and find. Some of us are real email accumulators, whether at our inbox or in our archives. But when I need to view just a few related emails, the filter function quickly lets me zoom in on what I want to see in just the folder I want to look at. For example, I get a lot of emails related to service tickets. So when I want to see just those emails, I can go to the View menu, select Filter, Edit and Create. I'm going to look for emails that have a subject that say Ticket. Click OK, and voila, GroupWise has filtered out everything else. When I click on a different folder, the filter is still in place, but you can see I actually have hmm, a few ticket items in several different folders here. Well, that's where the find function comes in. To see every ticket email that I've got, regardless of how well I've organized them, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the filter, back at View, Filter, Clear. And now I'm going to go to the very useful Tools menu and choose Find. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did before for the subject. I'm going to type in Ticket, click OK. And now I've got a new window with every single email in my entire email box that has the word Ticket in the subject. Let's say I've got quite a few of them. I can open these, I can move them around, I can delete them, I can reply to them, whatever I need to do. Then when I'm finished, I just close the window, and I'm done. So there you have it, two ways to make GroupWise a little easier to use. And here's one more computer tip you can use. Whenever you ask yourself, isn't there an easier way to do this? Give the City Light Service Desk a call at 684-3766, or check out the in website at sclweb slash helpdesk. On-the-spot support is just one of the many services we provide. That's what makes us City Lights Service Desk. Line workers are around many types of hazards in their day-to-day -day duties, and they use a variety of safety aids. Vehicle traffic requires well-marked work areas and an assortment of signals to get the attention of oncoming drivers. Working high above the ground means using safety harnesses and unique to the job is high voltage. It's not always possible to de-energize equipment when work needs to be done, so there are a number of safety precautions and equipment used by electricians. One of the first lines of protection is from insulating barriers called rubber goods. This is the generic name given to the protective gear used by line workers and other city light electricians. Gloves, rubber blankets, and line hose are designed to prevent injury due to incidental contact with voltages, which can be as high as 26,000 volts on distribution power lines. Ensuring this gear is safe is the job of the rubber test lab. All goods and gloves that go out of here have to be tested. Bruce Young is one of the material suppliers who runs the testing equipment. The idea is to find defects or damage that would allow voltage to leak and lead to injury or death of a worker and inspection is not a formality. This line hose has to withstand a sustained 40,000 volts for over a minute. In this case, high voltage found a tiny defect. And we had a failure. <laughs> oh, that was 40,000 volts. That was just virtually as soon as the test started, that failed. And sometimes it'll go uh, almost to the end of the test time. You'll have a failure then. There's no way to tell when it will fail. Even if we can't see it, we trust the machine and go with that. So this hose will be taken out of service and destroyed. The next hose withstood the sustained high voltage and was put into service. Gloves are a common type of protective gear used by all the electricians at City Light. They are put through a series of inspections and tests. Each glove is pumped up with compressed air 
and given a careful visual inspection with a powerful magnifying glass. The back side's important, but the, the main critical area is actually the, the fingers and the palm area. Each glove is assigned a number and cataloged. Then the gloves are dunked into electrified water in this special tank. Ironically, natural rubber, while an excellent insulator, deteriorates around ozone, a common gaseous byproduct of high voltage electricity. So these rubber goods are made from synthetic compounds. Other rubber goods include blankets, which are draped over power lines and insulators using special non-conductive poles called hot sticks. Blankets must also be tested at 40,000 volts in a specialized machine. Another successful test. And then we'd once again record the identification number and put a date stamp on it and send it on its way. Records help make sure the equipment is tested on a regular basis, as required by Washington State. City Light spends nearly $28,000 a year replacing rubber goods. Peter Clark reporting for Seattle City Light. There's much to see and do in Ponderay County. We'll show you where you can explore a cave, the best fishing holes in the area, the top hiking trails to hit, best campgrounds to plant a tent, and a great local golf course right on the river. Here at Boundary Dam, recreational opportunities surround you. There's hiking, fishing, boating, camping, even water skiing. It's one of Seattle City Light's best kept secrets. Boundary Country is an outdoorsman's paradise, and that's no exaggeration. The game found here is some of the most diverse in the lower 48, and fishing some of the very best. Ponderay County delights sportsmen year-round, according to local resident Kathy Petrich. There's quite a bit of skiing not too far away, and a lot of cross-country skiing, and snowmobiling, and ice fishing. If you've got a boat, check out the Ponderay Reservoir near the dam. There's a campground here and public boat launch that gives you immediate access to this 17 and a half mile long body of mostly flat water surrounded by breathtaking landscape. We do have recreational uh, area on the reservoir, reservoir a boat launch, uh, a camping area, picnic area, all free for, to the public. Boating on the Ponderay Reservoir gives you lots of advantages. Right around the corner from the Boundary Boat Launch is Pee Wee Falls. These falls, though, are not Pee Wee, nor are the fish you can catch here. In these deep waters reside River Run Rainbow, cutthroat and triploid trout, and large and smallmouth bass. I've caught a seven pound River Run Rainbow six, seven years ago, and in just the last couple years, we've been getting triploids in the uh, two to three pound neighborhood. Longtime resident Rick Ryber has been fishing this reservoir from the very beginning, when it was first filled back in 1967. Since they've been putting the triploids in and planting the rainbows, it's gotten a lot better over the last few years. And then about four years ago, the uh, Kalispell tribe started a warm fishers, fisheries hatchery up there, and they're planting uh, largemouth bass and smallmouth, both in the river. So it's, it's become quite a fisheries. The swimming here is also good. Warm water in the summer, and even some geologic formations you can swim through. And don't forget to look above you. Bald eagles live all along the reservoir next to cliff and rock geology that's spectacular. Venture further up the reservoir toward Medellin Falls, and you'll find cool coves fed by pristine streams. On a hot day, these coves can be as much as 10 degrees cooler than other parts of the reservoir. From here on up, the water becomes swift. Once you pass under this old pedestrian bridge, you'll begin nearing the town of Medellin Falls. You'll need a big engine to power through this water. Experienced boaters find it plenty dangerous. Hang on, guys. It's going to throw us around. Bump around here. But once past these fast currents, you'll idle under the Medellin Falls Bridge and have miles upon miles of more slow water and beautiful parks to enjoy. 
The Ponderay Reservoir is only one of many beautiful bodies of water in Boundary Country. Sullivan Lake is also a popular destination. There are two formal campgrounds at the north end of the lake. There's one at the south end of the lake. Um, if you like to hike, there's the Lakeshore Trail, which goes along the eastern shoreline of Sullivan Lake. Get some nice views of the lake itself and the surrounding mountains. Great hikes, lots of fishing, even ice fishing in the winter, and good camping all on Sullivan Lake. But be aware, bears do frequent these areas and campers should take precautions. If you are camping in the developed campgrounds at Sullivan Lake, you're required to keep your food in a hard-sided vehicle at night. Anything that humans eat, a bear will be attracted to. And they'll even be attracted to things like toothpaste and deodorant and, of course, dog food. A bit of good news. Bears have not been hanging around the campgrounds nearly as much since they installed these bear-resistant trash cans. On a hot summer day, you can escape the heat by descending into the belly of Gardner Cave for a tour you will not soon forget. An interpretive guide will show you the way as you descend lower and lower into a cave created over thousands of years by this. Dripping water that has eaten away at this limestone to create some wild formations. So this is a calcite formation and we call it the Christmas tree or we nicknamed it the zoo. When you look at it, you can see different animal shapes in it. Up at the top, you see the walrus. Next down, you see a bighorn sheep or a ram. And it's standing on top of a crocodile, which has a mushroom and then Bigfoot's foot. The weird calcite formations are a must-see. If you look hard, you might even see a past president's profile. Right now, we're deep in the heart of Gardner Cave, and this is the largest cave column in the Northwest. This free tour is terrific to do on a hot summer day, because inside here, it's a cool 39 degrees. This is no joke. Bring a jacket or you'll be one cold tourist. A nature trail on the way back to the parking lot identifies the local plants and foliage, even listing the scientific names for the plants. And don't forget to hit the donation box by the parking lot. While Washington State Parks does offer the cave tours free, donations are much appreciated. Finally, if you packed your golfing clubs, it wasn't in vain. The Serendipity Golf Course just outside Ione is where the locals play. It's a short nine-hole course right on the Ponderay River, complete with golf carts and even some lodging if you're interested. So go out there and explore. Boundary Country has an endless number of places to play or do nothing but relax. I'm Kelly Gunther for Seattle City Lights. Thanks for watching this edition of Netline. I'm Howard Grew for City Lights Service Desk. Whether your computer needs help or you just need some ideas to make it work better, give us a call, drop us an email, or take a look through our website. We can help.